loop line here and I want to go over the new custom harvester that's been added to Scrapebox. So if you go to settings, have a couple of entries here, use custom harvester and custom harvester settings. When you want to use it, obviously you want it ticked off. That's pretty basic. And when you hit custom harvester settings, you see this window pop open. Now the first thing up here, most of these settings deal with proxies and connections. You'll also want to note that if you have the use proxies box ticked off here and it's going to use whatever proxies are here regardless of what you have set up in here. So the first thing is use loaded proxies also corresponds to here. You can auto harvest proxies. What that's going to do is Scrapebox is going to go out to Google and search for new proxies that Google has found in the last 24 hours and use those. Then you can use selected sources and that's down here when you go to manage and go to harvest proxies. Any sources that you have selected, whether you've added them or they're the standard sources that come with Scrapebox, when you have them ticked off there, it'll use those sources as well. Then you get the choice of how many proxies to retrieve before you start harvesting. Pick any number that works for you. How many minutes shall be, shall before the proxies get replaced. So basically you put in here 10 minutes or whatever you want to do and every X minutes they will replace the proxies and then keep proxies faster than the following speed. This is just a, a time in milliseconds that you can basically rule out slow proxies and then you get your default connection settings for the number of connections. You can change this as later as well but that's the settings. Now that's the basic settings up here. Then we have the engines and the actual setup here. I'm going to go through and explain everything first uh, and that'll be part one of the video and then in part two of the video uh, for those that actually want to build in their own engines I'll go further in and we'll actually add an engine and I'll show you how it works. But the short version is that you have your engines here and as you click on each one you can see the information updates over here. So let's just look at Google. We have our display name, pretty basic, that's what shows up over here. The favicon, and that is what shows up over here as well. And then we have our query string, pretty basic. This is your string that goes in a browser that you see at the top in the address bar. You'll notice two tokens, the keyword token and the page number token. Page number is pretty basic, that's the number that goes in for to tell it what page you want and then the keyword that's your query or your footprint. And so different engines increment in different pages. So Google on this particular one is set for 100 results per page. So it's going to go up. Page increase is going to go up 100 at a time. So if you go to like page one in Google and then go to page two, you'll see this is 200. So that's what your page increase here is. You go to different engines, you'll see like, for instance, AOL is page increase one at a time. So it goes page one, page two, page three, that sort of thing out here under page number. So this is page increase. Page to start with is page zero because that's the first page. Your SSL connection type and then any kind of delay settings, the number of seconds you want to delay. And then in between harvests and then must be in the link. That is a qualifier because usually search engine URLs are really long and they have the link you want in it, but they have a bunch of other stuff in there too. So this is must be in the link make sure that you're getting the search results and not other random links on the page must not be in the, the link so you can rule out like navigation for the search engine and stuff like that and then just before the URL and just after the URL that shows the part of the URL that you want to extract and then the next page marker basically uh, dictates to scrape box where the next button is uh, what attributes to look for to see if there's a next button the ups and downs of that is that on the one side, if you don't tell Scrapebox how to find the next button, it may go through, for instance, on Google, all 10 pages. Now, say there's only three pages worth of results for a particular keyword, Google will continue to return the same results for page three if you go up to like page eight, nine, 10, etc. at 100 results per page. So what's gonna happen there is in, you could have quit at page three but instead Scrapebox is going to go through page four five six seven eight nine and ten but by giving it this next marker it'll look and it'll see on page three that there's no next button and so it'll just quit however if you mess this up and you put it in incorrectly and Scrapebox goes to page one and it can't find the next button based off the information you give it even if the next button is there but it can't find it because you give it faulty information it's going to skip all the rest of the results and you're going to get the page one results and nothing else so you don't need it if you know what you're doing uh, and you want to use it go for it otherwise you can leave it out then the character translation is um, 
basically URLs can come in encoded from different search engines and it just unencodes them so that they look nice and neat. And then additional data is you can add header data, a user agent, and then choose to follow relocations or not. And so that's the basic concept. Now, if we want to go ahead and add one, it comes with Dogpile already when you get the custom harvester settings here, but I've deleted it so we can go ahead and add it back in as an example. What we would do is just click anywhere and everything blanks out. And so, first of all, we're going to need to give it a name. We're going to call it Dogpile. Then I'm just going to go ahead and open it up in a browser. And what we need to look for is the query string itself. So I'm going to type in scrape box. And here is my query string up here. And then I want to go ahead and go to one of the additional pages just to make sure because sometimes it changes the formatting from page one to page two. And then all the rest of the pages will be the same. And you can go back to page one as well. So here we'll notice this QSI is 11 and I'm on page two. If I go to page three, we'll see it go up to 21. So basically, you start on page one at one, and then it's a 10 step increment. So page two goes up to 11. So when I put my query string in here, I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to put this in here, and I'm going to take QSI, I'm going to put in my page number token, which is page num. And then under my Q here equals, this is my query or my search. So I'm going to put in keyword. And the rest is good to go as it stands, just like it is. Now my page start is going to be on page one, because remember the page number here would be page one to start with. And then my page increase here is going to be 10 and then I'm not going to put a delay and uh, it's SSL 2 basically the easiest way to figure this out is just to try one and if it doesn't work try the other most engines support both so it probably doesn't matter but you get the idea so must be in link let's go here we want these links so as we roll over them we can see down here in the bottom Watch here as I roll over it. We'll see that that word click handler, click handler dot ashx etc is in every single link there. And then if we go up to like say the navigation, we'll see that it's not in there. So basically, I'm gonna grab that and say that that must be in every link. And then must not be in every link. That's where I'm looking for navigation type stuff. So as you go over it, you can see there and you can look at the code. So I just went ahead and put it together here. Must not be in link. We have here, just before the URL, as we just highlight over it, we can see down here that there's a question mark du equals because the URL is right, it'll be like right here as I roll over it there. So we're going to put the whole string here as right before the URL. And then as I roll over here, you can see right after the URL, there's an and ru equals HTTP. So we're going to put that in here. And the, this is the ampersand encoded there. And then marker for the next page, I'm just going to leave that blank. And so then character translation, I'm just going to copy that from Google, uh, which I already have it copied out here. And I'm going to hit add here. Uh, Dogpile here, we can get the favicon and we have that. And hit update and we're good to go there. Then additional header, header data. Basically, if you know what you're doing, you can use this. If you don't, leave it alone. Uh, then user agents, again, if you know what you're doing, you can use this. Otherwise, if you don't, just leave it alone. Follow relocation. Generally, you can leave that checked. Um, but you can experiment with that if you have any issues. And so when that's done here, we can hit this test button and it's just going to basically go out to the engine and try to pull in results for the word test. And you can see those look, look pretty good. So that's exactly what we're on. And then there's a go to next page there uh, as well so we can actually see what the results on the next page are and so on. And so that actually looks pretty good. So once that's done, I'm just going to hit OK 
And then we can go here, scrape box, and hit start harvesting, and then tick off dog pile. And here you can adjust your connection settings again. You can select all, select none, select whatever engines you want, hit start and it's going to go out and it'll give you the URLs and the results and then when you hit close it will bring in all your results up here. And that is how the custom harvester for Scrapebox works. <laughs>